all right my sexy people so i'm making this video because not a lot of people talk about some things on actually how to be successful with sps corals or in this case with the montiporas or the digitata variety like what i'm trying to go is that most people when they say oh how to be successful they talk about water flow the light, the chemistry, and all that, but I'm gonna talk to you guys about other things that most people don't talk about. Another runner up is uh pest for your corals and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like Montipora flatworms or something like that. Nudie Bronx, whatever it is. Those are all common things, but there's some few things that are not really discussed but obviously since you're right here watching I'm gonna tell you guys a few other things that are mostly not really talked about so first up is you want to have a clean frag or a fragment of the coral not 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 exactly like a clean cut piece or something that I healed up or anything like that I mean like the surrounding frag plug and wherever it's at the cleaner it is the better the coral will do it's going to grow a lot easier. It's not going to struggle. It's not going to have anything blocking its growth. All right. All right, real quick. So you look at this fragment right here, this coral right there. That guy is doing really good. But you see how it's covered in algae, the outside rim? It's, it's struggling to grow because there's so much algae on there. While in contrast, if you look at the digitata right here, this guy's doing really good. Yeah, this guy's definitely doing really good. But that's one of the key secrets is have the frag clean of any algae, anything that could obstruct the growth of the of the coral itself, like physically obstruct it. Chemically, you got some other problems. All right, next clue or next bullet, I don't know what you want to call it. I got nothing I don't have any of these in order nor did I wrote them down, so hopefully I remember everything. But next up is you don't really need to feed a lot or dose a lot of aminos. I've been overdosing a lot of aminos and everything and honestly, I have not seen any benefit of overdosing amino acid. I, I, there is a benefit of dosing aminos, but I honestly don't think you need to dose as much as people recommend or even what the bottles recommend. If you could just dose aminos once a week or twice a week. Oh, and along with feeding, you don't need to feed as much. Honestly, I think if you just feed like once a week, you should be good. Maybe twice a week. And honestly, focus on not changing your water chemistry as much. That's one big recommendation is rather to have your corals seem like they're starving a little bit so when you actually feed them they actually eat in contrast if you're always feeding they might not even eat the shit they'll just spit it out like anemones if you overfeed anemones they're just gonna spit it out do you overfeed your anemone like i treat every individual polyp you see right here as a little me mini sea anemone you see that i treat every single little polyp as a little sea anemone Maybe once a week, when they get hungry, I'll go in there and feed them. You know what I mean? That's all I do. Simple and everything. Another misconception is, chemistry-wise, you do not be you do not need to be dosing a lot of chemicals in your in your tank. You do not need to be dose. Oh, I'm not gonna mention names, but uh, you don't need to be dosing calcium, magnesium, potassium. Uh, well, actually, maybe potassium. Is something I do recommend because a lot of your salt products are low on potassium. But if you're using my shit, don't dose that shit. But uh, magnesium, sulfates, sodium chloride, uh, well, whatever it is, any of the major elements or anything that requires a reactor, something like a, like a calcium reactor, you don't need any of that shit, guys. That's all. That's all baloney. Um, if you keep adding these chemicals, you're just going to be changing the water chemistry. And again, if you do add these chemicals, 
maybe once or twice a week is all you really need to do. If you're adding these chemicals way, way too much every day, that's because your water chemistry is off from the beginning. And I would just change, uh, check your water before you do a water change, okay? Before you change out the water, check the water chemistry going in. Because there's absolutely no reason why you have to be dosing so much calcium in the water. Another exception might be clams. I have heard a biologist say that the clams really suck up a lot of calcium in the water and carbonate in the water to grow. But I'm not sure. Because even with those guys, I did not notice a difference. But hey, I don't know. Everybody does their own thing. Also, it depends on the species. So, um, But just from my experience, I'm just letting you guys know. And coloration, guys, I noticed a few things about coloration. One, they change through different tanks. And two, with the same chemistry, the same tank, same everything, changing just the light will change the color of the whole coral and everything. My corals look vastly, like my rasta, my rasta polyps look vastly different in this tank compared to under Kessel lighting. Personally, I think they look probably a little bit better under the Kessel light, under the blue light. But in this lighting, I, um, it changes throughout the day. So I get the different colors of the Rosses um, throughout the whole day. And wh what does that translate to? When you buy the fucking coral, when motherfuckers sell you that shit, don't expect it to look like that at all. And when you cut it up and when you transfer it to another system or another gr light, even if it's you, your own shit, same water, same everything... The coral color will change on you. Alright. Uh, let me show you something. This coral up here. The one I don't like. This guy is actually green and red. But he looks more like a blue and brown. Because his color is not really there. Same thing with this guy. The coloration is not there because he's healing up. Right here in the bottom. Oh, I know you guys can't see it. Right here in the bottom. But that's something to keep to keep in mind. Alright. And I'm not sure if I mentioned iodine, but like I said, iodine, any of the minor elements, just like I said, once a week when you feed, and you should be good. A next major pointer, color versus growth. Just focus on the color of the coral and make sure the polyps are out every day and just keep it fat and happy. That's all you got to worry about. The growth, even if it hasn't grown in a full year, fuck it, just leave it. If it doesn't grow in two years, just leave it. Why? Because that's the kind of mentality you're probably going to need just to leave the coral alone. Because honestly, people that want instant growth within a five-month span or six-month span are the ones that keep moving the frags and you keep resetting the whole process all over. There are exceptions to these types of corals that you could move and they'll still do good but usually they're soft corals or large polyp corals but when you're talking about small polyp corals uh, like in the title of this video definitely stop moving your shit because you're changing the water flow these corals they're they grow permanently using a calcareous uh, skeleton that they build or whatever the fuck they well whatever they fucking grow and that shit's permanent and if you keep changing that shit you're changing its water flow, the way it was naturally going to pick up nutrients, the way it was going to grow out as a mother colony. You change everything, so you reset everything, all right? So, I mean, it's common sense, but when your shit's not growing, like right here, I don't feel like this guy is really encrusted. As you see, it's not encrusted like my other Monty's, but the polyps are out, and that's all I care. And the, the coloration, you see how it's blue, green, Red, fucking all these other colors. I don't even know what the fuck that is. But this bubblegum digi is doing its thing. I really don't give a shit if it grows or not. If it stays like this for five years, I don't give a shit. Fuck it. You know what I mean? You people fucking worry about too much about growing corals because you're fucking greedy. And you want to make so much fucking money. And that's why you're so fucking poor. And that's why all your shit always dies. And why you're not successful. Period. Exclamation in your butthole. Another thing that they kind of tell you but they don't really tell you is stop adding more corals into your system. Because the more you add, the more pathogens, the, the more uh, pests, the more diseases, the more 
algaes, the more anything you're adding to the system, and it's going to disrupt the system in some way, good or bad. If you add hair algae to your system, then you're going to have to have a hair algae problem. If you add bubble algae, then you're going to add bubble algae. And the only way you introduce these organisms, I don't care if it's coralline algae, is by physically introducing them into the system. All right. And the more corals you keep buying and dying and buying and dying, the more the more you're building up of both good and bad shit in your in your system. All right. So why that's why in my system I tell you I'm not gonna buy any more corals because I don't want to add more shit, more problems. You know what I mean? That's all it basically is. More shit, more problems. Uh, another fucking common thing that should be obvious is stop pointing your power head straight to your corals and stop putting your corals directly under your lights. All right. That's, that's a common thing that's really easy to know. Um, but I don't know why people just can't figure that out. Another thing is your sand, no sand or a large gravel or whatever. It doesn't really matter. It just depends on what you're doing and what you want to do with your system. All right. So I'm not going to give you advice on what to have. But me personally, I have sugar fine sand on all my systems. And I like to have the microbial life and the macro life, the, like the larger forms of life um, in my sand bed. I don't care if it's worms or anything in there. With sugar fine sand, you're going to find more of these organisms alive. Downside to any sand or any anything, if you don't have enough water flow in there, there's not enough tumbling, you're not gravel vacuuming, it's going to collect a lot of nasty stuff. So that's why people go bare bottom, keep it maintenance free as much as possible, and just let it do its thing. All right. And if you have sand and you never change it, you never going to do anything. Like me personally, I'm never going to gravel vac this sand bed, but like I said, it has a lot of water flow. The sand's always tumbling and there's a lot of organisms living in there. When you have a real, real live sand bed, you don't need to fucking be doing all this nasty shit. And when you actually clean to go out there to gravel vac it, even if you haven't cleaned it in so long, because of all the water flow and the organisms in there, you're, you're not going to pick up anything out of there. You're just going to pick up sand and all the life in there and you just disrupted a lot of your sand which in some cases it's always good to go in there and gravel vac portions of your sand but not all of it at once all right but this personal tank it's so shallow so much water flow it took a week for the sand to kind of settle down and even right now the sand's tumbling if you look at my previous videos or I'll probably show you but it's tumbling still it's a light tumble so I have enough water flow. So that's a really important thing is always have your sand clean and your sump, your back chambers, your equipment cleaned up. I constantly clean my power heads a lot. You know what I mean? Because I don't want the algae on them and slow down production. So that way the corals and everything are always uh, happy and all that. All right. Keep everything fat and happy and it reproduce. Or is it produce? I don't know. But you'll see some growth in that shit. Another thing is, if you notice your polyps are extending, reaching out for light and everything, it's probably because they need more light. Or if you have your water pump and you notice the polyps are not fully open on one side of the pump compared to the, or where the water's hitting it compared to the other side, it's because you probably have too much water flow, direct water flow at the coral, okay? I'll show you a quick example. So I might move the pump real quick just because I noticed it while I'm looking. But you see right there on the left side, the coral polyps are not opening. But on the right side, they're a little bit more open. It's because the water pump, the water hit, is hitting it a little bit too much on the left side. So that means it's getting too much direct water flow. And simple shit like that, if you don't notice, that could be the death of your coral, guys. So I'm going to move my pump actually a little bit to the, to the left, to the left, right? Like fucking Beyonce and shit. Bam. All right. So I just moved the water flow a little bit, the little pump. And like I said, just by me doing that stupid shit, I just changed the whole dynamic of the ecosystem, the corals. I just reset everything. But lucky for me, the pumps are already like in a random action and all that bullshit. Um, different modes throughout the day and night. So we're kind of on the clear on that because generally the current's still flowing in the same direction. I only shift it maybe a few millimeters to the left because like I said, this tank's not that big. But on your system, you're... 
exponentially changing the system just by moving it even a slight little bit you're exponentially changing the system you're doing way much more damage all right it, you're doing it at a much bigger scale my scale is smaller your scale is going to be bigger and multiply that scale times that number and you have equals a lot of shitload of problems all right so anyways that's pretty much it guys so number for me the most important thing is have your water chemistry good and like I said, if you need help with your water chemistry, hit me up. Like I said, I could always help you out, guys. If you need help with your water chem, hit me up. And if you like what you see here and you want to duplicate it yourself, you're more than welcome to try it. And let me know if it works out for you. But like I said, uh, I'm going to be there to help you out with your little science experiment. And if you want to have your own experiment set up, let me know. All right. And before we go, look at this little coal right here. See, I just barely moved the water flow a little bit. God, I can't focus it. I move the water flow a little bit, and look, the polyps are already kind of opening out on the left side. And how long was that? Not even that long ago. While I'm just recording here, talking with you. I don't know, I can't focus it, guys, but you can tell they're starting to op puff up a little bit. But you see what I mean? Noticing little details is going to be the last... Uh, advice for you guys you guys got to start paying attention to the small details all right the small details is what this is going to determine your growth rate your coloration your coral and pretty much your success all right but that's pretty much all my advice for you on these quick tips i'm able to think of because i said i don't put a script i don't record pre-record or edit that much or any of that shit i just fucking let it let it fly you know what i mean or let it swim, right? Anyways, guys, that's pretty much... Uh, I have nothing else to say. All my sexy ladies that listen, thank you. Much love. And like I said, submit your pictures and everything for a potential date and all that. All my super sexy chinitas out there, much love and I'll let you guys go. Super sexy ladies, please. <laughs> I just got to make some funny shit at the end. Alright, love you ladies and everything. Much love.